Let A and B be finite alphabets and let hash be a symbol outside both A and B. Let f be a total function from A star to B star. We say f is computable if there exists a Turing machine which gives, which given an input x in A star always holds with f of x on its tape. Let lf denote the language x hash f of x such that x belongs to A star. Which of the following statements is true? A. f is computable if and only if lf is recursive. B. f is computable if and only if lf is recursive enumerable. C. If f is computable then lf is recursive but not conversely. And D. If f is computable then lf is recursive enumerable but not conversely. So this is a question from theory of computation regarding halting Turing machines and computability and recursive, recursive enumerable languages etc. All these concepts. So in the question what they have given us is that there are two finite alphabets a and b. a and b contain a finite set of alphabets and then hash is a symbol outside both a and b. And then we have been given a function f from a star to b star which means that given any string belonging to a star this function will give us the corresponding string in b star which is the function of that string. Now we say f is computable if there exists a Turing machine which given an input x in a star always holds with f of x on its tape. Now we say that the function f is computable if there is a halting Turing machine to which we give an x belong to a star as input and then it will halt and give us the output which is f of x belong to b star for that. If there is a Turing machine existing like that which can calculate f of x to any x given we say that the function is computable. And they have also given us another language lf denoting the language x hash f of x such that x belongs to a star. Now lf is a language which contains strings of this form such that x belongs to a star and then there is a hash and after that the f of x part appears f of x belongs to b star. Now they are asking which of the following statements is true regarding computability of the function and then recursive or recursive enumerable nature of LF. So let's start with the assumption that f is computable. Let's say f is computable. If that's the case from definition we know that there is a halting Turing machine which can produce f of x on input x. Meaning that if f is computable there is a Turing machine to which we can input x and then which will output f of x to us. So we can calculate f of x easily. Now given any string of the form s1 hash s2. Now here I have outlined an algorithm. What this algorithm does is that if we input any string of this form, first verify that s1 belongs to a star. This part should belong to a star. This a Turing machine can do easily, a halting Turing machine can do that. Second is verify s2 belongs to a star. That's also similar, that's also an easy part. And then calculate the string s3 which is equal to f of s1. Now we know s1 belongs to a star that's what we have verified here. Now s1 is a string belonging to a star and we know that the function f is computable meaning we can give the string s1 to this Turing machine that computes f and then it will give us an output which will be f of s1. So we can input s to this Turing machine and we can get the function f of s1 and let us call this string s3. Now check if s3 is equal to s2. The string we got f of s1 compare it with s2 and check if both are equal. If both are equal then we can say that s1 hash s2 belongs to the language lf given here because that's by definition s1 belongs to a star then hash then s2 belongs to b star f of x which is f of s1. So clearly we can say that s1 hash s2 belongs to lf. If no, then s1 hash s2 does not belong to lf. That's by definition. So what is this algorithm? What does it do? This is nothing but a halting Turing machine that accepts lf. For any string belonging to lf, if we input that to this Turing machine, then it will halt and accept. If it doesn't, if it doesn't belong to lf, it will halt and it will say it doesn't belong, it will reject. So if f is computable, I have given you a halting Turing machine that accepts any string belonging to lf. Which meaning that lf is recursive. If you have a halting Turing machine that accepts lf, then lf is recursive. Meaning I have just proved that if f is computable, then lf is recursive. Now we will go to the other part. 
And the other part says that suppose LF is recursive. If LF is recursive, it means that the Turing machine for LF holds for all inputs of the form S1 hash S2 and it will accept if S1 belongs to A star, S2 belongs to B star and F of S1 equal to S2 and it will reject otherwise. What are given in these two steps is that that's just the definition of this language. LF is recursive meaning if there is input any string if it's of the form S X hash F of X then it will accept otherwise it will reject. Now for any X belongs to A star for which we need to compute F of X we can input X hash S1, X hash S2, X hash S3 etc to this Turing machine until we get a string S X hash S of X that is accepted by the Turing machine. What I'm saying here is that we know LF is recursive for any language belonging to LF we have a Turing machine that will halt and say if it is belong to LF or if it doesn't belong to LF. Now we want to see if the function f is computable. For that for the function to be computable whatever x is given we need to find out f of x belong belong to this function right so suppose we have a sample x belong to a star for which we need to compute f of x what we will do is to this halting Turing machine for lf I will just input x hash s1 x hash s2 x hash s3 etc until this Turing machine will halt and say it will it is accepting that string so what is s1 s2 and s3 s1 s2 and s3 are nothing but all the strings in language b star which I have written in an increasing order. So let us say b star equal to let us say b equal to a comma b then b star will be equal to epsilon a b these are the strings of length 1 then there will be a a a b b a b b these are strings of length 2 so in a way we have an ordering in b star so these are the strings s1, s2, s3, s4, x5, s4, etc. So all these strings I will input to this Turing machine. Now it is guaranteed that after a point, so most of every one of these strings won't belong to LF. It will halt and say it doesn't belong to LF until we get one language for which it will halt and say it belongs to LF. Now why that is true is that it is guaranteed to return an accepting string because f is a total function i.e. for every x there is an f of x that exists which we can rephrase it in this form that there is a string x hash f of x belonging to lf so in this procedure we are keeping on inputting x hash and every string in b star for every x since it is a total function they have already given there is at least one string sx belonging to b star that is nothing but f of x now that string will belong to LF so that this Turing machine will halt and say yes this string belongs to LF that's what I've given here meaning it after a while of doing this this Turing machine will halt and give us a string x hash sx that Turing machine will say that yes this string belongs to language LF at that point we can stop now what is this string that this Turing machine say it accepts take the accepting string x hash s of x s of x is sx is nothing but f of x if this string belongs to lf it means that sx should be equal to f of x i.e. we have just computed f of x so I have just given you an algorithm if lf is recursive using this algorithm we can calculate f of x for any x given which means that if l of s is recursive f of x is computable so we have proven two things here one is that if f is computable lf is recursive second is lf is recursive f is computable meaning option a is the correct answer f is computable if and only if lf is recursive